Let's start today's topic which is fiber to fabric. In this video, we are going to learn about different types of fiber, animal and plant fibers and what are their sources. Different steps involved in the processing of wool from fiber. Processing of silk and life cycle of silkworm. As we know, clothes or fabric is made up of fiber. Fibers are thin, thread-like strands. From these fibers, yarn is made by the process called spinning. Yarn is a kind of long and twisted thread. This yarn is used to make fabric on a loom. It means fabric is made from yarn and yarn is made of fibers. There are two types of fibers, natural fibers and artificial also called synthetic fiber. Natural fibers are obtained from natural sources like plants and animals. Cotton, jute are obtained from plants, while wool and silk are obtained from animals. Synthetic fibers are man-made fibers. These are made from chemical substances, nylon, rayon, polyester are few examples of synthetic fibers. First in the list is wool which is an animal fiber. Wool comes from animals like sheep, goat, yak, camel, llama and alpaca. You must be wondering why these wool yielding animals have thick coat of hair all over their body. And the reason is these hair trap a lot of air and we all know air is a bad conductor of heat. So this trapped air keep their body warm in winter. Sheep has two types of hair, coarse beard hair and fine soft under hair. Coarse hair is the outer covering of sheep. These are long and rough. While soft under hair is found very close to the skin of sheep. It is also known as fleece. And this fleece provide fibers for making wool. Wool which is commonly available in the market is the sheep wool. For obtaining wool, firstly the sheep are raised, their hair is cut and then these hair are processed into wool. Looking after the sheep by providing food, shelter and health care is called rearing of sheep. And the person who look after the sheep is called shepherd. Sheep are herbivore and like to eat grass and leaves. So, shepherd take their herd of sheep for grazing. Apart from grazing sheep, shepherd also feed them on a mixture of pulses, corn, jowar, oil cake and minerals. In winter, sheep are kept indoors and fed on grains, leaves and dry fodder. The sweater and shawl that we wear in winter is actually made of wool and this wool is made from sheep hair. Making wool from sheep hair is a long process which involves many steps. First step is called shearing. When sheep develop a thick growth of hair, the fleece of the sheep along with a thin layer of skin is removed from the body. This process is called Shearing Hair are removed by using a shaving machine. Shearing doesn't hurt the sheep because the uppermost layer of the skin is dead. Shearing is done in hot weather of summer so that sheep can survive without their protective coat of hair. And their hair grow again before the onset of cold weather. Second step is called scouring. The fleece of sheep contains lot of dust, dirt, grease and sweat. So, these are washed thoroughly in big tanks. This process is called scouring. Nowadays, scouring is done by machines. Third step is sorting. Fleece of a sheep has different textures such as long, short, fine or coarse. After scouring, sorting is done. Hairy skin is sent to the factory 
where the hair of different textures are separated or sorted. Hair are kept in different sections and each section has same quality of hair. Fourth step is removing burrs. In your woolen clothes, sometimes you will see soft, fluffy, ball-like structure growing on it. These are called burrs. These burrs are picked out from the hair. After this, hair are again washed and dried. Now, these are ready to be drawn into fibers. Fifth step is dyeing. The natural hair of shape is white, black or brown in color. So, the fiber can be dyed in various colors. Sixth step is rolling into yarn. Now, the fibers are straightened, combed and rolled into yarn. Sheep fiber is originally curly. So, it is straightened first. This process is called carding. Carding makes the wool fiber soft and fluffy. Originally, carding used to be done manually by using two metal combs. Nowadays, machines are used to card a large batch of wool quickly. By the end of carding, the wool fibers are lined up into thin and flat pieces. Long fibers are thick and made into wool for knitting sweaters. While the short fibers are fine and used to make woolen clothes. Finally, we can conclude that the sheep's hair is sheared off from the body, scoured, sorted, dyed, combed and rolled into wool. Another fiber is silk. Silk is a natural fiber and is obtained from silkworm. Silk fiber is made up of a protein and it is the strongest natural fiber. Rearing of silkworm for obtaining silk is called sericulture. It is also called silk farming. Before we discuss the process of obtaining silk, it is important to know about the life history of silk moth. Life cycle of silk moth goes through different stages. The life cycle of silk moth starts when female silk moth lays egg on mulberry leaves. The female can lay more than 300 eggs at a time. The eggs hatch into larva within a week. The larva of silk moth are called caterpillar or silkworms. Larva feed on tender mulberry leaves and they consume these leaves for next 20 to 30 days and grow bigger in size. When the caterpillar is ready to enter the next stage of its development, which is called pupa. It first weaves a net to hold itself and then it swings his head from side to side. During these movement of head, the silkworm secretes fiber, which is made of protein and hardens on exposure to air and becomes silk fiber. This covering is known as cocoon and it is made of a single thread of silk. The silkworm continue to develop in the cocoon. This stage is called pupa. It is the motionless stage. After 2 to 3 weeks, the pupa changes itself into an adult moth. Silk fiber is obtained from the cocoon. In order to produce silk, the silkworm developing inside the cocoon is not allowed to mature into an adult silk moth. So, as soon as the cocoon is formed, it is used to obtain silk fiber. So, in the processing of silk fiber, first of all, silk moths are reared and their cocoons are collected to get the silk thread. As we discussed before, a female silk moth lays hundreds of eggs at a time. The eggs are stored carefully on a strips of paper or cloth. And then these are sold to the silkworm farmers. The silkworm farmers keep eggs under very hygienic conditions. They warm the eggs to a suitable temperature so that the larva can hatch. Then the larva are kept in clean bamboo trays with 
young and freshly chopped mulberry leaves. After 25 to 30 days, the silkworm stops eating and starts spinning the cocoon. Silk farmers put small twigs or small racks in the tray so that the cocoon gets attached to it. A pile of cocoons is used for obtaining silk fiber. Now the cocoons are kept under the sun or boiled or exposed to steam. The silk fibers are then separated out. The process of taking out the threads from the cocoon for use as silk is called reeling the silk. Reeling is done in special machines. Silk fiber is then spun into silk thread which later on woven into silk cloth. There is a variety of silk moth which look different from one another and the silk they yield is also different in texture. For example, mulberry silk, tusser silk, muga silk, kosa silk, art silk and so on. Hope you enjoyed learning with me. Like and share this video and don't forget to subscribe my channel.